Hey, girl. Hey. How are you? Good. Another Good. fast week. Oh, my gosh. This week flew by. So, last week I told you about the Slay Ride restaurant that yes. I saw on Group yes. 10. Yes. We didn't do that. Uh, nope. We didn't. And then, we didn't and do I that. forgot. My bad. And then we were also going to go get our nails done together. And I, I totally forgot about that, too. Didn't do that either. That's okay. I didn't remember that we had said we were going to do those things because this week was insane. I thought last week was insane with work. This week was equally crazy. Equally crazy. Really? Yeah. Are all the Australians and the Brits still here? No. Sadly, went, they're all gone. They went gone. back to their homelands? <laughs> they went back to their homelands. Lame. Um, but yeah, I think now it's like reality has set in. And we're like, oh, shit, we have a lot of work to do. Yeah. So it just was a lot of kind of like, oh, we got a lot to do. So See, I'm kind of lucky. Crazy. My business is starting to slow down a little bit. Which kind of makes sense, right? Like, yeah. I, I can't imagine a lot of people are out insurance hunting now. Right. Right? I could see leading up to this point. But January, then probably, like, I was going to say after the new year, I bet it gets bonkers. Getting financially stable is pro- and losing weight. Yes. are, like, the top two, yes. like, New Year's resolutions. Yes. So, right now, everybody's eating cookies and blowing money. Right. But come January 1st, right. <laughs> guess right. who they're going to be calling. Right. Which is so funny because, like, I feel like my life is just a little bit different. Um, I actually started, like, three weeks ago. Um, so, I had done keto before, like, when we were RVing, and I loved it. Really? I did. I absolutely loved it. Like, my body could eat like that all the time. I don't understand. I don't. I don't know so enough about it. I hear about it. All high the time. fat, medium protein, low carb. So, so like, like no my bread? no bread. Oh, that's so sad. No bread. So I pretty much save my my carbs for my wine. <laughs> <laughs> does wine really have carbs? It, it really does. Does it? It really does. does. It really. <laughs> Okay, so no, once when the calorie free carb free wine comes out, somebody let me know because <laughs> I will be all up on that. <laughs> well, I just went to. Smith's the other day and bought like fifteen or twenty dollars worth of cereal. Oh, sure. And yeah. I am a sucker for like those bags of cereal, like off-brand cereal. Oh, to me, yes. I feel like tastes so much yes. better. My favorite is like the off-brand um, Frosted Mini Wheats. Yes, I could, I could eat an entire bag They're by so myself good. in one sitting. And uh, well, I saw a couple specialty ones. Mike and I were talking about the French Toast Crunch. Oh, he yes. never had that, and that's like a '90s staple. Yes. And then um, I saw a new one, which is Nutter Butter cereal. What? Yes, it's fucking delicious. What? I ate I the can't entire box imagine. in two days. But he comes home and he like looks in the pantry and he's like, um, "Do I need to say it?" Because like I have, I'm not the most educated when it comes to eating healthy. But I'm like, "There's a lot to know." Look, it has real peanut butter. It's made with real <laughs> peanut butter. It has so clearly two grams of protein. So clearly, it's a health food. It's a health food. <laughs> It's only 150 calories, but, like, I eat, like, half a box at a time, right, so it's probably right. not total 150 calories. Right, right. It's fine. Um, I mean, but, you know, is a great source of protein. Health, <laughs> healthy living is, it's a learning process, and it there's really a huge is. curve. It really is, and there's a huge curve, and it, you can also, like, get in the weeds with mm-hmm. healthy eating, like, super, super deep in the weeds. I try to stay pretty surface level. Um, so, yeah, keto is, like, so basically my days consist of eggs and cheeses and meats and nuts and vegetables. See, but my no idea of keto is that it's a lot of cottage cheese. Um, not a lot of cottage I cheese. I hate cottage cheese. No, uh-uh. I mean, because it's a great source of protein, but it's it? also, yeah. So, um, like, I had a bowl this morning for breakfast. But I've cottage also, cheese. Mm-hmm. My mom yeah. used to put. Um, she used to like dice up in tiny little dices cucumbers, and put it in cottage cheese oh, with delicious. pepper, like yes. salt and pepper. Yeah, really? Yeah. No, no. The one that I can't get behind though are the crazy asses that put fruit in their cottage cheese. That I would sh- imagine that, that shit freak, freaks me I out. I put fruit in yogurt. Sure, but I don't think cottage cheese no. is like yogurt. No, it's not. I've actually never even tasted it. It just, it really creeps me out. It's so good. I can't not not eat it. 
Yes. It's so good. It gives me like hardcore heebie jeebies. Um, it's one of my favorites. It's like a staple in our house. So much so that when we were at Sam's Club yesterday, um, I think the container we bought is like four pounds of cottage cheese. Oh my god. <laughs> what is wrong with you? It's so much cottage cheese. Sam's <laughs> Club is a dangerous it's place. It's so ridiculous. Well, my so my mom and my dad and my sister and my niece and nephew are coming for Christmas. Will they all eat handfuls of cottage cheese? <laughs> well, they just eat lots of food. So we went to <laughs> so we went to Sam's Club. Naturally, oh spent three hundred fucking dollars there yesterday, but it's fine. It's fine. You know but, what financial tip you should do is so I was considering getting a Sam's Club or Costco, one of the ones. Yes. Yeah. Um, membership for Milo and I. Yes. Because there's so many things that he likes, and who knows if they're for a short time or not. But there's right. a few consistent things that he really, really, really likes. Yes. And things that, like, now that I'm trying to figure out a budget, yep. you know, because yep. I, re- I recently yep. went back to work, like, eight months ago. Um, like, full-time work. Right. Um, I'm trying to, like, figure out a budget for us, and I have been reading all of these other blogs... Because I'm obsessed. Like, there's a few that I really, really like. Um, and they say partner up on memberships. So, like, yeah. get, like, a partner. Yeah. Um, I plan on just stealing my experience. Perfect. Sam's Club's Club. Seems, seems reasonable. <laughs> Sam's card. When you go to dinner and I just be like, hey. So, I'm going to need a, I need, I'm gonna need a copy of that. <laughs> I need a copy of that. Maybe we should just, like, all go on the same. Because they get points, I guess. Yeah. I've never have, had a membership. So we just upgraded yesterday because we're suckers. And they, they fucking suckered us. So it's fine. So we <laughs> upgraded to, like, the plus membership or whatever. Oh, so God. now we get, like, tail. so we get 2% back on what we spend for the year. So at the end of 2019, we'll get 2% of what we spent back. Um, and You're technically can, a family of four. We so are. I'm sure you yeah. use it. Yeah. And with Xavier right now, we're basically like three adults and a kid. Dude. Dude like he is. Ma, I remember when my nephew yeah. was like between like 10 and 15. Basically. He would an, eat whole pizzas to himself. He is a bottomless pit right now. It's He's insane. a bottomless pit. And it's like crazy. literally this kid just doesn't get full right now. And it, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. That's and the insane. amount of sleep. That he's sleeping right now. Also, I'm just like, bro. Like today, finally, I was like, hey, dude, it's eleven o'clock. I'm gonna need you to get get your ass up in the morning. In the in the morning. Oh, did he say I'm late twitching? Almost, no, uh, twerking, twitching. <laughs> uh, no, he, on Twitch, right? No, he, Joe said he went like shut off the Xbox at like eleven last night. That's like twelve and a half. Hours. That's like twelve hours of sleep that that dude got last. That's night. That's like what Milo does on a good day, right? <laughs> I was like, dude, but I had heard and I remember, like, I kind of remember being a teenager, like my like circadian rhythms were off, you know, I would, what does that mean? That's That's a big word. It is a big word. (laughs) It basically means like, um, your body's natural, like alarm clock, like Mm. go to sleep clock, wake up clock. Right. And so during your like preteen and teen years, early teen years, that can get thrown off where you stay up late and then sleep in late and it's just like out of whack I remember being a teenager and I would come home and like take a nap right and like wake up at like eight right right and then (laughs) stay up until like all ungodly yeah until like one or two right yeah so um it's a hot mess being a teenager everything I feel like everything when you're a teenager is just wackadoodle it's in watching it now as like an adult and a parent I'm just like Fuck. At least he's like, not a girl and he's like storming up to his room. Oh my god, I hate you. I love my boyfriend. Well, it's basically all of that. My <laughs> <last sentence. laughs> it is, really. Don't worry. I feel like girls are. I'm not are missing worse, out on any of the teenage drama. At least at I'm, all. I'm hoping girls are worse because <laughs> I currently only have one boy. So. Right. Yes. No, but, it's basically the same thing. It's yeah. like. I've asked you 1,700 times to take the trash out. Will you please take the trash out? And then he looks at me like I've, like, it personally insulted him. <laughs> what? <laughs> Fine. Like, if I had a dollar for every eye roll that kid gave me, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> fuck my life. But anyways, I have a perfect four-year-old. <laughs> nope. Because, it, you know, what happens now is is Corbin watches 
Xavier. Of course. And so now I have the preteen <laughs> and the pretend preteen four-year-old. So it's enough to make me, um, I, I, I have, I think this last week, partly why I went by so fast is I'm pretty sure I put away a, a bottle at night by myself this week. Girl, do it. So that, that happened. Um, I'm just hoping that it wasn't a bottle of this week's wine review. Um, I don't even really have words for how not good <laughs> this wine was. You know, we have some really like uh, high education content on this channel. We really do. We are literary geniuses. <laughs> um, and this is currently episode 10. So what? let's give cheers to that. Oh, We've yes. done this for 10 oh my episodes. God. That means 10 weeks of us talking shit about our kids. 10 weeks, man. Mom bonding like fuck. I love it. 10 love weeks. It. Ten I weeks. feel like that's a milestone. And we have a bunch of good stuff coming your way because sure there have been companies. If none of you know, I was a mom blogger for about two years. And we have companies that I've already worked with for the past two years that want to partner with us, but they so have been cool. waiting for this moment. For episode 10. For episode 10. Yes. And a shout out to all our listeners, too. Yes. Guys, here's Rock. Our last week's episode doubled in downloads from the two previous weeks. No way! Everybody has been eating up those motherhood assumptions. Oh my god, that's so rad. It was a good I'm episode. So, it was a great episode. The worst episode to edit, because there was some, there was like, some real drama life that had to come out drama, of that. Yeah. Um, that we kind of cut out of there. But, yeah. Good episode. Yeah. In the end. Really good episode. I actually listened to it the other day. So my editing, not that bad, right? Not, not that, no, not at all. It was good. Um, but yeah. Uh, but this week, we, or last week, we introduced a new segment. Yep. And it, it is, well, we don't have an official name. We don't have a name yet. We need to put something, maybe this Wednesday we'll put something on Instagram for you guys to name this segment. Yeah, we need a poll. We are doing a weekly yeah. wine review. Yep. So I was recently in the liquor store and I saw this bottle. It's and a it, cute bottle. It's a cute freaking bottle. And it had a work. Cute. That means you're like legit. Um, <laughs> but okay. I saw this bottle. That's my thinking because, <laughs> like you know, it. I'm a wine connoisseur. <laughs> we'll go with that. Um, but I saw this bottle of red truck and it has this cute vintage like farmer with like a red truck. It's so cute. It and it's like great. an illustration too. It's and not it like is. a picture. It's super, super cute. It's cute. And my son Milo loves trucks. So I was like, this is going to be super good. It's super Amazing. cute. Maybe yeah. I'll keep the bottle right. and do something cute with it. You know, all that DIY we do. That's right. Um, and it is a red truck 2016 Rose, California grown vented and bottled um it's the worst thing i've ever tasted it's in my life terrible so i walked into emma's house today and she's like here's the here's the wine that i wanted to review with you and just just take a sip and let me know what you think and i don't know if i could accurately recreate the, the um the look on her face <laughs> was like out of a horror movie it was pure it's like somebody disgust pooped in my wine glass. Ew. It's bitter. It's, it's sour. It's not good. It's just it, hands down not It good. tastes like um, somebody dumped a little bit of vodka because it's very almost alcoholy, Like rubbing alcohol. Not yes. like yes. Not good like, booze. Not it's boozy. not a boozy time. It's not a boozy. It's like a it's, antiseptic. Yes. <laughs> Now, if I, like, this is almost one of the worst things that I've ever put in my mouth. Uh, that's what she said. And I would absolutely yes. agree with that. That was terrible. And I was like, we got, we got to be able to, we got to be able to choke this down. But I literally then couldn't bring myself to take another sip. Between Tara and I, I am guaranteed in the next statement that we have choked down <laughs> <laughs> maybe some days alone, maybe in a group gathering, maybe at a restaurant. But I can guarantee that we've choked down a number of really awful wines. Yes, this one <laughs> takes the cake. It's bad. It's bad. 
a cute bottle. Yes, I'm gonna so dump please, the wine down the drain and yes, I'm gonna keep the bottle. Yes, please do. I was thinking like some little LED like twinkle lights or something and it would be cute. Yeah. Um but ladies don't be fooled by the super cute bottle and think that you're gonna get this like super yummy rose that's it's it's awful. It's terrible. Yeah. Um so yeah. So now we're drinking something else. That came out of a box. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's better. I, it's so much better. It's better. So I've it's been getting the Vela <laughs> um, boxes of wine at my local liquor store here in Salt Lake City, Utah, and they typically have a wine that is a white sangria. It tastes like Moscato that has like a bunch of peaches in it. It's delicious. It's pretty good. It's super sweet, but it's something I like to. You know, drink when I'm binge watching really shitty reality TV. Oh yeah, um, as you do. And yeah, that's that's my favorite pastime. Yes, it's a yes. hobby if I have one. Yes. Um, but this week I didn't have that because they are currently having a sale on their boxes: thirty-five glasses of wine for twelve ninety-five. That is a mathematical equation that I can get behind. Yes. So. They were currently sold out of the peachy goodness, but we're drinking this, uh, what is it, a, a delicious blush, as they call it? Yes. Um, and it's not bad. It's, it's better bad. than this Red Trap California Rosé that I spent um, more on than I did the box. Yes. And I feel like that's saying something. I'm a fan. I feel like... I'm a supporter of box <laughs> wines. This is how much of like a... Like a- risk taker and a team player I am I feel like after this glass that we've just had maybe maybe a second go chug it now let's all right let's do this we're doing this and one of these days <laughs> we are going to have a YouTube stream while we're while we're recording because this we were gonna is, do that this week I know and I thought about that but then I still you had no pants on. I had no bra on. I have no makeup. I'm, I'm greasy as hell. So my hair's that's not, not cute. That's not happening yeah. this week. Maybe we gotta, next week. We plan a little bit we'll put a that. poll on our Instagram story to see how many of you really want to see us in person. Yes. Are our voices are angelic? I was going to say angels. Musical voices. <laughs> are they enough for you? You got to get or, that visual. <laughs> do you do you want to see what's really going on? Here? <laughs> Got to get the train wreck <laughs> behind all the angelic beauty. So I just poured Tara a half a glass you of did. the red. Uh, yeah, it was a little bit heavy. It, still, it doesn't even smell good. It doesn't smell good of the red Trek rosé. Oh, God. I feel, if you vomit on my carpet, <laughs> you at least have I, carpet floors. No, I I am not a wine thrower. Ever. <laughs> so let's just put that out there real quick. Oh, this is... Oh, God. It's bad. Uh, that is not good. <laughs> <laughs> that's not good. Oh, my God. That's that's uh, hilarious. But because this is for the sake of entertainment, that's... Uh, I will finish that. I'll really? I'm going to do it. I don't really? know if I'm going to chug it. I mean, I'm not like Matt Bellisai. I'm not going to chug this thing and then sound like an idiot. He, I, mean, I, might. I swear to you, is my spirit animal. Uh, no, I'm gonna be more madly in love with him. And plus, I have to still drive myself home. So if I'm chugging this disgusting wine, I still have to get myself home. I wish that he didn't like. I want him to be my next door neighbor. We need to have him on this podcast. Oh my happen. god, that would be a <laughs> dream. That would be insane. I don't know. We would need to be somewhere where we would then be staying the night. Yeah, no one would be driving anywhere. After that episode. No. No. We were recently um, invited to Sundance and a mom convention here. So maybe this podcast will take us to NYC. That would be so cool. I would be down for that in an absolute heartbeat. I hope not like just for like financial gains, but I feel like this podcast is so fun. I hope we can take it to as we can too. far as we can because take it. I have a blast recording it with you. I have a blast like promoing it, and I think people are enjoying it. I mean, they obviously are. Yeah. So I'm down. Our views had like more than or downloads on podcast.com have yeah. more than doubled since last week. That is so cool. It's, yeah, it's getting so awesome. Cool. Shout out to you guys. 
Thank yes, you. thank Thanks you to all of our beautiful listeners. <sighs> I love it. But you want to get into our peaks and our pits? I do. I do. So my pit is kind of a lengthy story. Oh, man. I want to hear it. So I know. You're hoarding it. Another. I I know. I'm hoarding another really good, a really good story from you. Um, Because what I've recently learned is like crazy ass shit happens to me. Like just crazy shit happens to me. And I don't know. I don't join the club. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why, but it does. So anyways, um, so let's see here. My peak of this week. Um, oh, you know what? I actually went to dinner at one of my coworkers' house the other day, and I literally probably had the most fun that I've had since I've moved to Salt Lake. Really? Like, we had dinner. It was like a small group of our coworkers, like all the people that I really enjoy. Oh, you're getting in on it. Yeah, you are. I'm going to give it, it one more shot. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's one of those lines where if we just get through a glass, yeah, maybe the second one... Maybe our mouth will be numb at that point, and we'll be able to, uh... I just feel like I need something to, like, stir or twirl during the story. Yes. Maybe yes. not sip, but, you know, holding <laughs> something... Holding on to something. Makes these conversations a yes. little bit easier. So, um, so yeah, so we went to her house. She made this delicious soup, and one of my other coworkers, Zach, made a salad. Yep, that's the face I was looking for. We really need to record <laughs> these episodes. <laughs> It's so bad. It's so bad. It's that so face bad. I just made after two was legit. the tiniest so sip. So legit. Like, legit. I still feel pain. Yes. Mm. Yes. Bad. I'm just, I'm, I'm taking sorry. it for the team. You know, I didn't, I didn't want my, my face to, <clears throat> to interfere with your story. Um, I'm so sorry. That's okay. <laughs> but I took my kids and we went to her house and we ate and the kids played and then we played some Cards Against Humanity, which <gasps> is like the ultimate I've been dying to play Cards Against Humanity because so I always fun. play Apples to Apples, oh, which is kind of like a PG thirteen. It's version. like a G version. Really? Yeah. Does it get worse? It, oh yeah. You you would think I'm from Salt Lake, right? No, <laughs> uh, but no. Like, I am some so cards down. that me that I even have a hard time with sometimes. Really? I'm like, oh, that's that's a line that I'm not sure. I want to cross. <laughs> oh no! But uh, but you do for the sake of winning. Oh, you gotta win. Gotta win. Um, did you win? I did not win. Oh, I'm disappointed. I know. I was really sad. I'm very competitive, so I was pretty bummed I didn't win. But it was so much fun. We had an absolute blast. My kids had a blast. Um, so that was definitely my peak. I think one of the most fun nights I've had. Um, I wish my yeah. job opened me up. To that opportunity and maybe it will down the road sure. of like you know meeting people yes. and getting together yes. but when Tara and I met you know people might think that we are lifelong friends they would think that but we recently met at an essential oils party um, yes. hosted by a fellow mom in yes. our non LDS group group on social media um, and that's how we met you guys and yeah, we are that not, was, we don't go way back. Yeah. Well, it was crazy because Mike like pushed me to go because I was getting to the point where I was like, you know what? I had a lot to do today. I don't know if I want to go. Right. I'm like very antisocial. Yeah. To a point. Sure. Um, you know, and I was like, it's all the way in Sandy. It's seven miles away. <laughs> and he's like, get the fuck up. Yeah. And go. go. And it was so much and fun. And I did. And it was great. You had a great time. It was super, super fun. For so, everyone who doesn't know, Tara is an essential oil advocate, expert. Educator. Educator. Yeah. Um, and her link, if you're interested in alternative living, yes, I guess, yeah. is that something you could yeah, say? Absolutely. Um, natural healing, if yes. you're interested in any of that, check yes. out her link below. And shoot me with any questions, too. If you're yeah. like, what the hell, how the fuck? Send them over. Happy and her answer. Instagram is also always linked below, as is mine in yep. our podcast. Yep. Yep. Um, so, yeah, if you have any questions, shoot yep. her a message. Yep. And I've got some education over there on Instagram. It's mostly, you know, some mom life stuff and a little bit of oily education sprinkled in. But uh, always happy, always happy to answer a question. That's, like, one of the things that I love about that job. It's awesome. It doesn't even feel like a job. I love it. Um, so my pit. Yes. You ready for this? I'm so ready. So last week, um, just to kind of preface what happened. So this event occurred on Friday night. 
Okay. Last week, um, in the middle of the night, one night, I don't know. Are you living in a hotel? Uh, no. Okay. We're in our, we're in our home, in our townhouse. Um, and so. Did your car catch on fire? No. Okay. Mm -mm. Nope. (laughs) Sure didn't. Thank God. (laughs) Knock on wood. I know. Shit. (laughs) Um, but so I'm laying in bed and I hear like, bang, 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 bang. Doorbells ringing. I hear voices. So our bedroom is over our front door. So we, I hear that, right? Right. And I'm like, what in the fuck? And, and then I hear knocking again. So I'm like, babe, babe, someone's at the door. So he gets up. He doesn't even wake him up, but it wakes me out of a dead sleep. Well, yeah. He gets up, goes downstairs. It even woke Xavier up, who's on the backside of the townhouse, who can also sleep through anything. Was it like a SWAT team? That's what I thought. I was like, damn, like the police have showed up at my house. Like something shitty, shitty was going down. No, Joe goes down, answers the front door. Nobody's there. Nobody's there. Are you getting ding dong ditched? I don't know what's happening. So we're like, that's super weird. So then I go to sleep and then proceed to have a dream that my house has been broken <gasps> into and cut catches on fire. Right. So anyway, maybe it was a SWAT team, but for the neighbor. <sighs> <laughs> so, of course, then we're like, oh, it's, you know, some of these teenage kids, they got the wrong house, right? Like, we've got all these reasons. So, Friday night, um, I go upstairs, go to bed, Corbin goes to bed. He usually still wakes up at some ungodly hour of the morning, and I have to put him back in bed. And so, I do that, and it's like maybe 2.45, I think, is what I saw, because my Apple Watch kind of came on, because I bumped my side table, so it came on. Laid him down. I laid down with him. He fell asleep. I got back in bed. And as I'm starting to fall asleep, I hear a garage door. I was like, what? Do you have garages at your townhouse? Yes, we do. So we're on the back side. Oh, okay. Um, And so I hear this garage door. And I was like, huh. Well, our neighbor has really odd hours from time to time. So I'm not sure. You know, maybe it's her. And so I laid there for a second, and I hear it again. And I was like, so you hear a weird noise again? So I hear it again. It's, and it's not a weird noise. It's the garage. Okay. And But is it your garage? At that moment, so the second time I hear it, I'm like, oh, fuck. That's our garage. And so I was like, okay, well, I don't know what's happening. So I look over. Joe's in bed. And I was like, okay, well, I was just in Corbin's room and I saw that, you know, Xavier's door was shut and his noise machine was on. So he was in bed. So I go back into, into Corbin's room because it overlooks the garage. And I don't know what I was expecting to see, but maybe, I don't know, something. Like a vehicle. A vehicle. Person, something. something that would give me some kind of a large to dog. why I'm hearing <laughs> our garage door. Right. And so in all of my wisdom... I decided to go downstairs. Oh, my God. Why would you do that? I don't know. Send your something, husband. That's what they're there for. <laughs> Literally something just, like, came over me, and I was like, I'm going to go downstairs. Because I was like, well, let me rule out freaking myself out first, right? Like, let's just rule that out before I wake up my husband for no good reason. So I go downstairs. And mind you, I'm in my tank top and my underwear. Like, I'm not, <laughs> like, dressed, you know, So I go downstairs and I lean my ear up against the door that goes from the garage into our house. Okay. Well, at least you didn't pull a scary movie and just open the door. No, no. So I put my ear up to it and I fucking hear someone in our garage. (gasps) Someone's in our garage. Are they robbing you? They are literally robbing us. (gasps) What? Do you have, like, a fancy car? No, like, my car was parked outside. So I parked on the outside of the garage because we had, like, a bunch of shit in our garage. We just, this week, started selling all of it. Um, like, a bunch of gym equipment and stuff like that. So I parked on the outside because we had, basically, like, a mini gym in our garage. Oh, okay. Right? So we didn't really have room to park a car in there. And I'm just like, oh, my. And so I instantly start shaking. So what do you, like, do you think they were banging on your door to see if people were home? I think, so Joe and I talked about this yesterday, and we're like, I think they were casing it to see what time people go to bed. And, and so they knocked on the door to see if anybody would answer it at, you know, whatever time it was that last week. Wow. So I instantly start to shake, and I'm like, oh my God, 
somebody is in my garage. So I walk the door from the garage into the townhouse. I lock well, that. Yeah, that's not a door that I would typically lock No, either. because if your garage door is shut, it doesn't matter. Why would somebody be in there? Why, right. Why would right. you care? Right? So I immediately lock that door. And we don't live in a bad area no. of town. No. Not I didn't have a lot of knowledge before moving here, but we live in a pretty bougie area. Yes. We really, really do. So I... Um, it, and then it flashes through my mind that I had forgotten to lock my car before I came home. Like when I parked last that night, Friday night and came inside, I just was in a hurry and I just came inside, um, because Joe had been out of town. He was Do out of town on gun? Thursday night. We have two. Have you like taken the classes and stuff? Cause I'm I am considering going taking to the class. be now. Really? Yes. We should do the class together. We totally should do the class together. So, um... So I'm like, oh, fuck. So I go to the front of the house. I grab my keys. While I'm grabbing my car keys, I see that our front door is unlocked. <gasps> and I'm just like, what is happening in my house right now? So I lock that door. I go to the garage door again, and I hit the lock button on my car. I'm hoping that that is going to be enough. To, like, spook them off. To spook them off. And at that moment, then, I go upstairs. You think the next thing I'm going to say is I wake up my husband. I don't wake up my husband. Why not? I get my phone and I call the police. So I would hear smack Mike in the face repeatedly until he woke well, up. Well, so here's the thing. So in my mind, this is how it was going to play out. I was going to wake up my husband. He was going to go downstairs. He was probably going to grab a firearm, go downstairs. And shoo the robbers away, right? No, right. No, it's going to be a yelling altercation. My children are going to wake up. It's going to be terrifying and scary. Now I've got two kids awake. I've got an enraged husband with a firearm and I've got a burglar in my house. Right. So I'm like, this all seems not okay either. <laughs> so none of this is okay. None of it is okay. Oh my so God. I, um, so I call the police. I call the police. I'm sitting on the steps. Does your town. Yes. Do they still have the not police department? They do. They're still unified. So, so did you but the up, message for them no, to return it was a Monday? live person. It was Good. a live person who answered. Good it was a them. woman, and I was like, "There's somebody in my garage. My family is asleep upstairs, and somebody's in my in my garage." And she's like, "I've got, I've, I've already got it in. Like they're on their way." And she's like, "Stay on the phone with me until they get there." And at this point, I'm literally like shaking. I'm sitting on the stairs on the phone with dispatch on the other side of the door, listening to somebody go through our garage. Is there anything, like, major? Did they get away with, like... No, so here's the crazy thing, and I'll good? kind of, like, wrap up that piece of it, but, um, I mean, my husband has a shit ton of, like, power tools oh. and expensive work equipment. That stuff can be pretty That crazy. kind of stuff, right? So, I thought for certain that that's what they were doing. And very easily pawnable. Easy. Super easy. Take a dr power drill to a pawn shop and get probably, what, 15, 20 bucks? Easily. And we've got at least four of them. Right? It's like a hundred bucks just in drills right there. So, um, so I'm sitting there and she's, you know, she's like, do you still hear him? I'm like, I think I do. And then now I'm like, do I really still hear him? Is, is my mind playing tricks on me? Right. And then I looked down and I was like, I should probably put pants on before the police get here. <laughs> put some mascara. So, some so I go upstairs. Maybe a bralette. I grab my sweatpants. <laughs> I put my sweatpants on. I sit back down and I hear a, a knock at the door and I think the dispatcher heard the knock and then she probably also heard me go, <gasps> right? And she's like, hold on, don't answer it. Let me make sure it's our guys. And I was right. like, okay. And then she's like, okay, yep, it's us. You can answer the door. And I answered that door and the minute I saw those two police officers standing there, I literally started to sob. Like it was like this release of like knowing that I was like safe. Yeah. And I didn't have to, like, be, like, the stoic And your husband is just asleep this whole just, time? Just asleep this whole time. Oh, my God. I think Mike would probably so, kill me if I did not so, wake him up and we were getting rough. I'm, like, sobbing, right? And the officers were like, and I was like, I don't know. I'm still here. He's like, no, no, no. We were just in there. There's nobody in there. You know, can we come in? I was like, yes. I was like, I'm going to go wake up my husband now. So I go upstairs. I'm sobbing. Joe was oh like, God. why are you crying? And so <laughs> I tell him what happened. And so he comes downstairs, we put our shoes and our jacket on, we go outside, 
we see that my car has been gone through, like my glove box is open, everything's out, my center console's open, everything's out. And the police officers ask us, you know, is there anything visually, just looking at it right now before you even open the doors, is there anything missing? And so I'm looking through there and I was like, my garage door opener is missing. And so we're looking around the garage. My husband's like, I don't see anything missing. But what was They're interesting planning on coming back. So what's interesting is when we came out, um, like this little work stool that Joe has was moved over to the side of the workbench and there were some boxes down that were up high. So those boxes were an empty gun box because our gun is locked up in our in our townhouse. Right. And empty ammo cases, which are locked up in the townhouse. We are responsible gun owners. Our guns and our ammos, our ammos, our <laughs> ammo is not in a box in our fucking garage. Right. Right. They're under lock and key. Because so, we have two children. Exactly. Right. Like, we're not stupid. I have battled really hard with myself back and forth between getting a gun and not getting a gun. Yeah. Do I feel safer? Having right. a firearm, or right. do I feel less safe because right. I'm a small girl? Right. Could they take it from me if somebody does come into my house right. and then kill me and take right. my son with my own gun? Right. right. Yeah. Um. So I battled so yes. hard, and I think I finally landed on a decision that I think I need a gun. Well, and I'll tell you why I feel like I'm thankful that we have them, and why I want to take the classes. So. The officers asked, do you guys have a firearm in the house? Joe says, yes, it's upstairs, it's locked, because they had also seen the gun box and the empty ammo cases. That's what they were looking for. That's what they were going through. They didn't take a single thing. That's what they were going through. So they're obviously not drug addicts. No, and obviously they knew what they were looking for. Like, have that's you gone to one of the indoor ranges the shit out of me. here in not yet. City? Not yet. So weird. Super weird. Do you ever leave your garage door open? We do. That was a big thing for me. Yes. I used to always leave my garage door open we do. because I mean, my not like when we're home we leave it open. Right. But like if I go somewhere, like if I run to the Real grocery quick, store, yeah. I'll close it. That was my thing. But and I home? read that that's the biggest mistake you can make because yeah. my garage door opener on my old house was really, really finicky. Yeah. And also in my condo in Elko, I didn't even have a garage door opener. So I would always leave it open and my right. car got broken into. Yeah. So, um, so shut your garage door, people, guys. Please do. Jesus Christ. Shut <laughs> Stop being a lazy door. ass bitch. And shut Just your fucking shut garage, your garage, garage door. Oh my God. <laughs> well, okay. So you see my podcast equipment. Yes. Yeah. Um, so national Michael's, um, company, his yes. work company yes. rents, I think they rent, or maybe it's a couple guys from national because they work here so often. They rent a couple apartments in the building that's across from mine. Okay. And they saw me picking out my podcast equipment box from the car. Cause I left it in there from the last week's episode. When yes. I was at your house. Yeah. 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 Um, and they were like hooting and hollering at me, like cat calling me. And I think they might've thought I had a gun in there. <laughs> That's funny. Because I had like, cause it, it's that. kind of, I mean, it's small enough that it could appear to be, one. but I, I look mean, at it and think like AV equipment. I don't look at that case. And when I ordered it off of case. Amazon for the $37.99 I, I bought it for. Right. It said gun studio, musical, like, all this crap. That Collectible, blah, 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 blah. Store and carry in that case. Store and carry case. Right. And I'm like, okay, well, it's going to get the job done, whatever. Right. Um, <laughs> but that was that was funny, something that happened to me this week, is they right. were, like, cat calling me, and I'm like, <laughs> what is your deal? Like, do you think I have a gun in here? Right. So, I... Um, so they, you know, they take our information, they, fought, you know, they open the case. Um, I'm still kind of like, kind of weepy, kind of shaky, still really just like freaked out by this whole thing. We unplug because we, now we can't find the garage door opener. So I'm like, this scumbag still has my garage door so opener. do you think he's planning on coming back? Well, that's what we thought. So we unplugged to the garage door opener and we tested it and won't open if it's unplugged. Done deal. Right. 
So we, I locked my car. We unplugged the garage door opener. I, we set up for probably maybe 15, 20 minutes. And then I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm spent. I, I'm going to try to go back to sleep. At this point, it's like, I don't know, uh, maybe four o'clock in the morning. So I go, I go back to sleep. Joe stays up and then eventually comes to bed. So we get up the next morning or a couple hours later and we're talking about it. And that's when Joe says, you know, I'm going to buy you a gun safety class and a gun education class. Um, to go to, and then I want to start taking to the range. To so has shooting. he gone through the whole thing? He already? did in Oregon. Oh, okay. But he has to redo it here, but he's been through it before. So he's like, I really think you should go. And so I, of course, Dude, text let like, me know because oh, we should you totally do, it, do it together. We should. We should totally do it together. I feel like yeah, there has been so many crazy things, and I think we'll get into some of those things when we go to my peaks and my pit. Yes. Um. But I feel like it's a necessity now. It is. And so I text my girlfriends. I told them that what was happening. And one of my girlfriends asked me, you know, do you feel like if you had knowledge and understanding and, and confidence in using the guns that Joe has, would it have changed the way you reacted? And I thought about it for a long time. And what I landed on was no. Really? I probably would have got it. I probably would have had it on hand. I still don't think I would have opened that door. But if that person had decided to try to enter my home, I would have had... Oh, blown away for sure. Exactly. I would have been then prepared instead of sitting on the stairs, pantless, listening to them rob us blind, right? I'm just like picturing you getting like one of those like black pillowcases over your face and getting like kidnapped in your fucking underwear. Right. So, um, so I think that was the thing for me where I was like, I at least want to be able to, if I have to defend my home and my children. Um, there's a whole I don't new think I, level. I was, I'm not going to open the door. Right. Right. But I feel like, if that person had chosen to enter my home, I would have had the confidence and the wherewithal and the training to defend myself and my children in my home. There's a whole right? new, I feel like there's a whole new level of... We're drinking this wine too, by the way, guys. Yeah. Um, I, I, think we're, glass. I think we're um, in numb state. Yeah. But I feel like there's a whole new level of territorialness, if that's a word. Um, like protective instinct. After you become a mom, because absolutely, I was such a pussy ass bitch. <laughs> I had a big old mouth, like I was like a chihuahua. Okay, like <laughs> a big I, old mouth and nothing to back it up. If I was like twenty one at a bar, I would run my mouth. I traveled all over. I lived in Las Vegas. I was like all talk, no bite. Yeah. Um, but now. Like, people have been, like, fucking with me. Yeah. Coming after me, coming after my kid. Yeah. And I'm like, I will fucking cut you. Yes. Yes, without a single second guess. Um, like it's, somebody, like, it's like Mama Somebody walks syndrome. up to me weird in, like, the parking lot of the yeah. supermarket. Yeah. I'm, like, on guard. I yes. feel like I have, like, bee vision. Where I'm, like, a bumblebee. And I have, like, eyes that are just everywhere. See everything, yeah. Um, I, yeah. I would agree with that 100%. I think that since I've had children, I'm more hyper aware. I mean, granted, I'm still pretty lackadaisical. Like, just that's just my nature. Right. But I feel like when it comes to my children, I am... Yeah, we're not serial killers, guys. No, no, no. (laughs) And I've never even fired a firearm before. We are I've never even held one before (laughs) yesterday when my husband told me I needed to learn how to hold one. So, yeah, we're not I'm really not, badass. I'm not hard, <laughs> right? I'm not Get hard. gangster. You know, we should watch. Because I say gangster also. <laughs> we we should watch the Will, the Will Ferrell and Kevin Hart movie. Oh, right? Like Kevin Hart yes. teaches Get Will Ferrell or whatever it's called. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, so we're just normal um, suburban housewives, really moms. I just, but you don't, know. don't fuck with me and my, my babies. It's just the bottom line, right? right? Like, just don't. Um, so, yeah. So, so that happened. So, anyways, we uh, left yesterday to go finish up some grocery shopping. We went to Sam's Club, spent a fuck ton of money. Um, of we were talking about the all of everything that kind of happened. And I'm really, really, really grateful that Joe 
was not angry with me that I didn't wake him up. Like when I explained to him why I didn't wake him up, he was like, okay, no, I understand that. He's like, cause had I gone down there, it absolutely would have been an altercation. You think he would have like screamed at them? I think like... he would have opened the door and like, it would have been like a fight. Really? Yes. And both of my children would have woken up. They would have been scared shitless. I mean, Xavier was already scared last week when somebody was banging on the door. You know what See, I mean? I feel like Joe is one of those like Navy SEAL type guys where like he doesn't look <laughs> like The Rock Dwayne Johnson. He does not. But deep down all. in his soul, <laughs> he is. Like those Navy SEAL guys are stealthy and they're always like typically like tall Joe's and lean. Not, Joe's none of those things. And. I feel like he's, deep down, he's none of those things. Because like, if I looked at him, I would not have even thought that he would have owned a gun. Yes. Or been a Two. supporter of guns. Yes. I've met him a few times. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I'm not dogging on you, Joe. If you listen to the show, he doesn't. It's okay. But I look at him and I think more funky socks. Yes. Um, <laughs> cafe <laughs> style fella. Yes, that is yes. He is, he's a, he borderlines Metro a little bit. So he's like, still he love, don't fuck with me. Yes. He is very stealthy. Don't fuck with me. Like he'll nice. snap in a heartbeat. Yeah. So that terrified me. So when I explained to him why I didn't wake him up, he was like, no, you're right. That would have been scary. That's exactly what I would have done. You probably made the right call. However, I wish you would right. have. Well, of course. Right. I think, I think he didn't want could. me to be the one having to like, bear the brunt of all of that like crazy well that's a nice husband it is and i appreciate that very much so um we got home from grocery shopping um and he cleaned out the garage so much so that now i can start parking in the garage in the act of cleaning the garage he found the garage door opener oh so it is not in the hands of the scumbag it is back in my car so what do you think they like tried to take it and dropped it no i think when they decided to Start going through our stuff. He just put it down. He just threw it. Just tossed it and then started doing whatever they needed to do. Um, well, I feel like this could be a silver lining. Right? At least you know the people who are robbing your garage are a little bit more organized criminal. Yes. Than just some random junkie from the street. Exactly. Um, and, and also so now the silver lining is, safer. is I get to park in my garage now. <laughs> And I don't have to scrape my car in the morning anymore. I feel like there's many people who could be going through your garage and somebody from a lifestyle that does more organized crime, yes. I would want robbing me yes. than just some crazy psycho heroin junkie looking yeah. for their next fix. Right. Just trying to just take anything and everything they can get their hands Right, because typically when there comes organized crime, there's two rules, and you never hurt a woman or a child. Right. And you're obviously a woman, and you have children. So, yeah, most likely they wouldn't have done anything to you, which I hope makes you feel a little bit better. A little bit better, right? (laughs) Um, You know, and that's what a friend of mine said, too, was, like, you know, most petty thieves like that really aren't there to, like, cause bodily harm. They're just trying to, like, get their hands on something that they can then either use or go and sell. Um, and obviously they scoped you out. So this, and that's that thing, creeps that's, me out though. That's the thing that is still really, really unsettling. For like me. how long were they watching yes. you? So that, that's very, very unsettling. For they me. probably took photos and noticed that you had gun boxes in the photo. Right. So that freaks me out. Right. Um, makes me trade? very uncomfortable. Do you want to trade apartments? <laughs> For a while. <laughs> so, I mean, we even considered, like, asking our, our property managers if, like, we can move into a different unit. Really? Yeah. Um, well, I know you were planning on moving into a different right. unit. Were yeah. you trying to do that sooner now? We are thinking about it. Yeah. So, we're just, just because we're on, we face the main road. There's the main sidewalk that runs in front of our unit. And you have two kids. That would make me nervous. Right. And then we've got the side sidewalk that splits the the row of townhouses that runs between our house and the next one. So there's just a lot of traffic right. that can happen around our, our unit. So, Well, this might be a blessing in disguise because right? my apartment complex are a bunch of slumlord she-devils, but maybe the people who operate your property are a little bit more yeah. humane. Yeah. And they're really, really great. I mean, I know suck. they can all fucking go to hell. 
I know our property managers. I know that Ashley who's leaving and Jade is taking over and they're both amazing and super compassionate and like really, really fantastic. And we missed the hours yesterday to go over and, and tell them what happened. So we're going to make a point of doing that tomorrow for sure. They might be a little bit more understanding and let yes. you move sooner. Maybe cut down the transfer fee. Yeah. You know, something. because it's a just, little bit. it's a little, it's a little, it's, it's, um, I had a hard time going to sleep last night. Really? I had a really hard time going to sleep last night. Like every little bump, oh, every you little like. You me. <laughs> I can't it's, believe, I, okay, I understand saving the fact that you have a lifelong secret sister for the podcast, <laughs> but your house was broken into, bitch, you can call me. I know, I know, I had a really hard time going you know, this is not night. something you save for the show. <laughs> this is something you call in real time. I know. Like, call me at 2 a.m. and be like, I my think there's the rappers in my garage right now. Robbed. Um, there's a handful After you of people, call the police, of course. Yes. But call me next. Yes, there's a handful of people that ran through my mind that I should tell them that that was happening, like, in real time. Um, was I even on that list? Of course you were. Thanks. Of course you Great. were. That makes some me feel of real them, good. Some of them don't even live in the state. Um, well, of course so it would not care. have done any good. Um, some of them do live here in the state. And even then, I was like, mm, I feel like... For the same reason I'm not waking up my husband, I don't want to tell this person or these people that this is happening because... Oh, I would have immediately been like, Mike, um, stay fucking here. I'm going to go... <laughs> like, like, you're going to come... I'm, I'm going <laughs> to, like, pop some cans of whoop ass <laughs> or whatever it is. I love that you tell Mike to stay here and you're going to come handle the situation. <laughs> Instead like, of being like, hey, Mike, Terry's house is getting robbed. Will you run over there real quick? No. Be like, you stay asleep. <laughs> I'm going to go handle some business. Right? Yes. Because, well, okay. again, we're hard. Mike is, he's a strong man, and I appreciate everything that he does. Yes. And I, I feel like, honest to God, if it, like, if it came down to it, he would protect us. Absolutely. I like, have no doubt. He would stand in front of a bullet yes, for us. Yes. Um, and I love that about him. But when it comes to doing things or coloring a little bit outside of the lines, that's more my territory. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. So we did your peak yes, and pit. Yes. Yeah. So, so getting into my peaks yes, and my pit. Yes, I want to hear all about this. Um, I'm just going to start with my pit first so we can end on a happy note. But Michael, I okay, so when we went to court, the judge said that she's granting Michael the less than bare minimum visitation. Right. Bare minimum is 111 overnights a year and right. he only gets 74 days right um and I, i'm okay with that you know i feel like i i don't want to share my son obviously right well uh, especially with that that person piece of right mm. not human i would be more than willing to share him let's we reword this with somebody that i knew for a fact that he would be safe. Yes. That he would be cared for. Yes. That he would be happy with. Right. Um, but Michael has always bailed early on his visits. He's come to visit and he's shown up and Milo was cool to him for a couple hours. Right. And then he leaves. Right. Um, he's never stayed put with a visitation schedule. He just never given a fuck about a routine. Right. So I told Michael, I was like, you're the one that decided to give up control yep. to a judge. That judge ruled. Yep. She said that you need to pay child support and daycare costs. Yep. Before or you, half of daycare. Right. You need before to split those. he can see Milo. Right? Um, I don't, she didn't say before, but she needs, she said basically like you need to take care of your shit. Yep. And I'm going to grant you visitation. Right. So I told Michael, I was like, due to your past and the things that you have done, right. I want you to pick up and drop off Milo from daycare. Yeah. He agreed to that. And I was like, okay, well, I will put you on the pickup list if you pay me back for the past five months of daycare costs right. by Thursday. Because right. he wanted to pick Milo up on Friday right. um, night at like six o'clock. 
And I was like, okay. I was like, so you have to let me know by Thursday because my daycare has a software yep. and a system yep. that they follow. So yep. I was like, okay, I will give you guys like There's 24 hour notice. To follow here. Right. There's now a there's now multiple parties in my life that I am not okay with, but that's the lot that's the way my life has gone. And I mean, like there's like daycare, which I I'm fine with. I right. love the fact that daycare is in my life because I never thought that I would be a daycare mom. Right. Right. Um it's a big it's a big I well I sacrifice. Have, I had right? like a nanny growing up and that's not as common out here. But I honestly think the people at Milo's daycare are so great. Yeah. Like, they're very educationally driven. Yeah. Um, That's one thing that Utah does well. Is they do education and, and education. Oh, my God. Well, mm, like, their high schools, like, I was talking to my husband. Their boss. public schools are rated very well, but I wanted to send Milo to private school. Oh, sure. And they don't offer a lot of those. So, that was, like, a downfall for me. But... I really, really, really love the people at my daycare. What I'm not thrilled about having in my life are a commissioner, a judge, right. two sets of right. lawyers, right. and then get this, the constant police officers harassing me I at my door. I can't. No. No. So if you guys have been listening oh my God. for even a few weeks, you right. should know that right. my goal called the cops on me. And tried to get me arrested. For stealing your car. For stealing my own car. Grand right. Theft Auto was the right. charges that he was pressing. Right. And now he's back. And now he's back. Back again. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, back streets back. And. Jesus. He is trying to get me arrested now for custody evasion. So basically he called. And he played the victim. Oh, and he no. played it. He whined his sad, sad, sad right. story right. to a police officer. Right. And he's saying that, like, I'm holding Milo hostage. I'm keeping Milo from him to gain financially. Which all I told him to do was, you need to pay the past five months of daycare that you owe me. We're right. supposed to be splitting We're daycare splitting costs. It. Right. Um, and he hasn't paid his half since he got me fired from my last job. Right. And th not fired. I was asked to resign. Right. Which is a really polite way of saying, get the fuck out. Right. So he hasn't been paying that. So I told him, I was like, I will add you to the approved right. daycare pickup right. list when you pay me back the past five months. Pay me what you owe me. And he refused. Now, if I was trying to use Milo as a pawn to gain financially... I would be like, okay, I'm going to keep Milo from you locked in a box in my closet right. until you give me $20,000 or $1 million. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. You're like, I just need a couple hundred bucks to pay half of what you are supposed to be paying. Yeah. So he stole my car, got me terminated from my job. I had to start an entire new business, new career. Well, right. it's not a new career. I've done it for a long time, but... I had to start completely over in a city and state that you I'm know, not no familiar one. with. And you know no one. And then all of a sudden he starts withholding Classic. child support and uh, daycare. Classic. I'm like, could you be any more textbook fucking narcissist psychotic? Douchey. Douche canoe. Could you be textbook urban dictionary douche canoe? Seriously. Like, Get, Come on. Get the fuck over yourself. Oh you tiny oh little God. puny, disgusting vermin little, of a human being. He is a tiny little human, too. I've seen him before. You have? I have. Remember when we did the um, Outlaw Distillery? That's right. Girls' Night, he was here. He's the worst. He really, he kind of is. So, yeah, the police called me this weekend saying that I was in breach of custody and I was going to be charged with custody evasion. And I'm like, okay, police officer of bullshit Utah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> right? I don't no care thanks. what you threaten me with or I don't care what you claim I'm doing. Right. I'm protecting my son regardless. Right. And Michael was texting me all that day. 
And he was like, so, uh, what size, uh, diapers is Milo wearing? What size clothes is he in? What kind of foods does he like? No. What kind of toys is he into now? And I'm like, if you were a fucking half-decent person... Right. Or a half-decent father... Right. You, you would, would know. fucking know these things. You would know. I'm like, you're not gonna fucking steal my car, constantly try to get me arrested, fucking... Do all this shit that you do. You. Just harass, harass me. You. Monday, tomorrow, because we record these on Sunday, I have to file harassment charges because he will not stop. He keeps showing up at my house. Right. He keeps emailing me, texting me. He will not stop. Oh and my it's God. like, when you tell a narcissist, this is it, do not contact no. me. No. The best thing that you can do is say that because uh-huh. they have to have the last word. Yep. And I'm just so fed up. I'm like, you, like, this, I'm done. Because I had to file yeah. a restraining order on him in Elko because he freaking, what is it called? Garnished or bra- brandished a weapon. Yes, brandished. Brandish. Towards Brand- me and my son. He was, like, twirling it around. Like, he's from, like, he's like Butch Cassidy and Sundance <laughs> Kid. <laughs> When me and my infant baby son were in the room, and he was a 12-pack in. No, no. I'm like, dude, go to fucking hell. Right. Stay away from me. Like, the judge needs to reevaluate her priorities in life. Yeah, not okay. Because for a judge, after everything that we discussed, to give a ruling like that, I know my lawyer said I got the best case possible. She didn't even give him minimum time. But, like... It's not her kid that no. she's trusting no, it's not. with an abusive, neglectful right. piece of trash right. for 74 days. Right. I get the minimum is 111, but that's 74 days my son is going to be in harm's way. It's, I'm, it's, it literally is enough to make you like imagine the worst. It, yeah, right? and it's, that's what I'm doing because the past terrible. two it's times terrible. that Michael was alone with Milo, Milo ended up in the hospital. Right. It's he not was okay. admitted. Not okay. And hospitalized. Not like, okay. I'm not going to let that go. And, like, maybe I'm like, whatever, I'm not playing fair. But I don't give a fuck because that's my son and I'm going to protect him yes. with every, every ounce of my being, of your being until the day I die. And hopefully that's like, like years, a long years way years away. Years. But. Years. But anyway, back onto a happy note, I got all of my Christmas shopping done. <gasps> well, okay, not all. I'm jealous. So I was planning on, we talked about this before, doing experiences. Yes. And I really wanted to do experiences for everyone. Right. But I had an idea of, I've heard so many great things about the Salt Lake Theater. I have two. And I was planning on Would giving to go. Mike's parents yeah. tickets to see the theater here in Salt Lake and like dinner gift cards. Right. So they could have like a cute little date night. Yes. I feel like they've both gone through a lot. Yeah. Um, Mike's mom recently like had like a really big surgery. Yay. But I feel like that it's just been a big year for them. Yeah. And I thought maybe like a little reconnection, yeah. maybe a nice little date night. Oh yeah. You know, it would be really cute. Gift idea. And I was talking to Mike, and I was like, I think that's what I decided on getting your parents. And he's like, you know what? Like, I've gotten them so many times, like, tickets to go see this or that, or, like, sporting events or dinner gift cards, and they never use them. Oh. And I was like, okay, did they just have a lot going on? Did they maybe not like? The place that you sent them. Right. Okay, right. because Mike is a sports guy. So He's if a he, big sports guy. If he maybe got his parents, like, basketball tickets to go see the Jazz. They might not go. I wouldn't go. <laughs> um, I would go if the Blazers came to town. I don't even uh-huh. know who that is. That's the Portland Trail Blazers. Oh, okay. They're, I thought that was Golden State. No, they are the Warriors. Oh, okay. I kind of I kind of like it. I kind of like basketball. I'm not in to basketball, as you can tell. I actually basketball. have a really funny story about basketball. I love basketball. So, when I was living in Las Vegas, I was somewhat bartending, somewhat serving at Planet Hollywood. Okay. 
And when you work at a casino, they kind of put you kind of anywhere and everywhere. Right. Wherever there's a need, they kind right. of stick you. Right. And I was mainly working at this Brazilian restaurant called Pampas Brazilian... Something. The Grill. Whatever. <laughs> um, it was like a fancy, like, they come yeah. around to your tables and they shave meats and, like, oh, yeah. really good pineapple. Oh, and it's, like, yeah. buffet style for sides. It's It's a cool place. Yeah. And I met some of the best people, I swear to God, I've ever met in my life working there. And I can get behind, like, me on a stick. Yes. Any day. So good. Any day. Um, but, so, is his name Stephen Curry? Uh, no. No? Close? Ste- Stephen? Yes. Stephen Curry. And a couple of his, like, b-ball besties, like, came in and they Shut sat in the wine room. Up. And I always ran the bar and wine room. That was, like, my gig. I go back to get them waters, sodas, whatever, for their drinks, because I greeted them as I was a server. And I am back in, like, the server station, and my coworkers are losing their fucking shit. Because you see my face. Yeah. And Cause they're, Steph like... Curry. I only knew him as the guy that, like, chewed on his mouth guard. I don't know him as, like, a person. (laughs) So, I go back there, and they're all like, oh, my God, do you know who you're waiting on? This is insane. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Are you talking about the table, uh, uh, the people at table four? And they're like, no, the wine room, the wine room. And I'm like, it's a bunch of dudes. Like, I'm assuming it's probably a bachelor party. And they're like, it's not a bachelor nope, party. Sure not. They're basketball players. And I'm like, oh, I'm from Las Vegas? And, <laughs> and they're like, no. No, dummy. No, they're from California. And I'm like, oh, my God, are they Lakers players? No. And they're, uh, just uh, just no. the champions. And they're like, okay, just just stop talking. <laughs> and they all like got frustrated with me and like walked away. So I go back and I like give them drinks and it's literally like, so when you work at Planet Hollywood or anywhere on the strip, you have to sign paperwork that says that you're not going to act overly excited, that you're not going to ask anybody for autographs because right. you wait on a lot of famous people. Sure. Sure. That makes um, sense. And luckily me being the dimwit that I am, <laughs> I I've waited know. on tons of famous people and I don't even know who they are. Right. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm like giving them their drinks and my friend Bill's face is plastered against the glass doors to the wine room. Oh yeah, for sure. And he's like drooling yes. at the mouth. Yes. And so they like make a comment about, they're like, oh, so you went back and told your friends that you're waiting on us. And I'm like, I don't even know who the fuck you are. Right. Because <laughs> I'm that server <laughs> that gets tips because I don't give a fuck. You'll right. get your drinks, you'll right. get their food, right. but, like, you'll we'll have some banter. Yes. Yeah, like, yeah. we're gonna have banter. I'm gonna talk to you like you're real people. I'm not above or below you. Whatever. And they thought that was the greatest thing. They they ate it up, thought it was hilarious. That's amazing. So, they, like, make their jokes, and they, like, ask me, and I'm like, well, I'm from Cleveland, so... I'm like, and I barely know what LeBron James looks like. And it was the year that they played uh, yes. Cavaliers yes. and yes. Gold Warriors. Gold, Golden mm-hmm. State. Yes. And, <laughs> in like the playoff championships. championships. Uh-huh. Yes. So, <laughs> so they were giving me all kinds of shit for being from Cleveland. Oh Steph Curry. Have and, I said that yet, guys? Well, have I got Later, he have I called me. Yet? And I answered the phone, and I took a to-go order, and he came by. I don't know if he's married or if it was his girlfriend. He's he's married. He's married. But he had the cutest baby girl. And they ordered, like, a bunch of desserts and, like, some stuff to go. Oh, my God. She was a doll. Yeah. So cute. And he has a little boy also. I'm that, a little bit of a Steph Curry fan. Really? So, so um, I'm freaking out sitting over here he's right now. Like, he's a beautiful, like, he's like this light, buttery skin tone. He is with like, like what Xavier is going to look like when he gets Bright older. blue eyes. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's, yep. A, he's yep. a handsome man. Mm-hmm. But 
But That's to put that aside, mm-hmm. his yep. little girl is going to grow up to be the biggest heartbreaker. Oh if she doesn't have, like, 160 dates to homecoming, <laughs> I'm going to be really disappointed in her, like, ability to snapping own skills. <laughs> Bitch, own your shit. Because you are, like, drop-dead gorgeous. Yes, yes. No. So cute. But, yeah, like, he brought, like, a lady and, like, a kid to pick up, like, a to-go order. Yep. And I walked out of that day with, like, a couple grand in my pocket. That's amazing. But, yeah. And you still don't even know who he is. His name is Stephen. Steph- Stephen Curry, Steph Curry is a basketball player. <laughs> <laughs> For the Golden State Warriors. Which is in... California. California. Yes, it is. <laughs> and they are also champions. They are champions. They are champions. I think they won against the Cleveland yes, they um, Cavaliers. Yes, they did. Big deal. And maybe that's why they're giving me so much shit. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but yeah, I got all of my that's Christmas so shopping Good. done. But, you know, I think because Mike totally just stomped on my gift for his parents, I might just sign my name to a couple of his gifts. <laughs> Seems like a reasonable solution to me. Doesn't it? It absolutely does. I have no oh. shame because yeah. I had like a great idea. I and, wonder, and if you want to buy me your idea, I will let you. My whole thing is <laughs> when I give gifts, I would rather show up with no gift than to give you something that's completely thoughtless. Yes. Yes. And Mike's like, oh, well, it's worse to show up with nothing. And I'm like, what would I get at that point? Like, I had right. this thoughtful, like, right. gift. Yes. That I thought was thoughtful. Right. What do I show up with? Like some Starbucks K cups or right. like a, some isotoner fucking slippers? Right. Like, what do you Come get on. after that? Yeah. Like, no, you, you shot don't get down. Anything. Yeah. No. My top gift that I was like, I had all this thought and all this love put into. Well, if you make it to dinner tonight, yeah, you maybe I'll be like, like, around a little bit. Like, what do you guys want for Christmas? Because yeah. they asked me to come to dinner tonight, and Mike left on a train. So they asked, mostly his dad called, and he's like, hey. Can Milo come to dinner? Do you and Milo <laughs> want to come to dinner? And he's like, is Mike left on a train yet? And I'm like, no, he's sitting right here. Do you want to talk to him? And he's like, fuck no. If I wanted to call him and talk to him, I'd call him and talk to him. Right. And he's like, I called you. And I'm like, okay. And I was like, what do you want, PH? What do you right. want? Right. He's like, do you and Milo want to come to dinner? And I was like, okay, yeah, like, we'll come to dinner, whatever. Um, So maybe I will. Maybe I will just, like, fish around. Fish around. And see what they want for Christmas. I think that would be awesome. I'm finishing this terrible mm-hmm. fucking wine, by the way. Do it. While we have been recording, we have continued to choke down this entire bottle of terrible, terrible wine. Now, terrible. this is not even cheap. Because it was like seventeen ninety nine, no. but if you maybe are giving some gifts this season, and maybe you have, if you've been reading my most recent blog post about work related life, yes, and you have the woman from accounting named Kathy who talks to you about her cat babies and how she has five hundred cats. This is the wine for her. And you want to give a gift that you can pass off as being thoughtful? Give her a bottle of Red Truck 2016 Rosé. Because <laughs> it's fucking awful. It's awful. And but, Kathy is going to love the shit out of it. <laughs> because she has 500 cats. And that's what cat people do. <laughs> um, did you read that post? Because you're laughing yes, hysterically. Yes. Yes. I know. My... <laughs> My cynicism is I'm just not giving a fuck. Good. Lately. I like you like that. <laughs> I like anybody like that. The more people who cannot give a fuck rank, start just like, it's like fucking leveling up in a video game in my life. Like the less fucks yes. you start to give, the higher rank you start to get in my life. I, and I love that. I was really determined to do Blogmas this year. And I've done it very successfully in years past. And I was planning on doing a very easy version of 25 recipes. Right. Um, but that went down the fucking drain. Good. Um, I've basically decided that there is so many things that take up my time yes. during the day. Yes. That unless I'm very passionate about it. Yes. Um, I'm not. I'm just not going to do it. Yes. And lately I've been getting hits of like these bursts of inspiration. Yes. 
And I've been writing about the things that inspire me. I think that's like the best writing that you can do. Oh, it's been good, yeah. right? It's yeah. been freaking good lately. So good. I'm a little oh, proud of myself. So good. Oh, hold on. Mike's calling. Okay, nice way for me to not turn my volume off during the podcast. That's okay, but I, um, I'm i sorry that I don't have any good advice for you on whether to go to dinner tonight or not. So but here's the thing. Here's the thing. My, my bottom line basic rule besides don't let the children kill themselves and don't kill them, the next rule is you don't wake up to be maybe. Yeah, so you guys, you don't. for the past couple days, Milo has been so hard to put down for a nap. And I don't know if he's in another one of those like transitional phases where he just is having a hard time or if maybe he's adjusting his sleep schedule again. But it has been dire, you guys, dire. And he is asleep now and it is... 447. So And I'm supposed to be at dinner at five. At five. So what I would do if I were you, I'm scared. I would text PH and just say, hey listen, Milo's still knocked out. I don't think I'm gonna wake him up <laughs> anytime soon. But if he's up in the next, you know, half hour, we'll head your way. Okay. Right? That sounds good because um I'm not gonna lie, I'm terrified of my fucking kid. He is a little, he's so fucking cute. So cute. But he is a terrorist. Yes. For sure. Yes. Because he's two. Oh my God. It's the worst. And then he'll be a three major. No. And then that will suck. No. But he'll still be so cute. I love that we have this dynamic of (laughs) you've been there, done that. I'm new to the game and we can kind of feed off of that. But regardless, I'm, I'm still living in denial. It's okay. You can deny it up until the very bitter end. (laughs) I I feel I'm going to lose this battle and I know it, but I just want to live in denial for as long as I can. Hold on to it. Hold on to it for as long as you can. I did the second time around. I was like, no. Obviously, that was just Xavier. Obviously, Obviously. that's not any other three-year-old on the planet. (laughs) And then Corbin was an asshat at three-year-old. Like, it just, it's just what it is. It's just what it is. I'm terrified to go in that room. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Maybe he'll wake up and he'll be super pumped. (laughs) (laughs) He's too. He beats me. Oh, Milo. I get it. No. I get it. It's a struggle. It's real. This is going to be a long episode, but I'm not even scared because it's, it's so good. It's been a good one. It's been a super and good one. And I feel like maybe a little extra Emma and Tara on our 10th anniversary yeah. week. Yeah. A little, little extra? A little bit extra. A little bit extra. We had a lot of crazy like ass fucking guacamole. Shit go down yes. this week. Yes. I was almost arrested for the second time. My cousin would be so proud. Aww. Um, Tara's house was broken into. Sure was. Christmas almost shopping. Trying to shoot somebody. I really did. Um, the worst wine review ever. Ever. Which, by the way, is only our second one. Our second one. But <laughs> we, also, we also finished that disgusting shit. It, yeah, I, I started it a couple days ago. I opened it and had a glass, um, and it was so bad I dumped it out. And we finished and it. And then I saved it for Tara. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, but we just finished it. But I, I just wanted her opinion, because I've been congested. I've been tripping over my words. I've been congested, and it's been hard for me to breathe. So I was like, maybe my taste buds are off. Right, which happens when you're sick. And I'm like, I'm going to save this for Tara. I bought it for the podcast in the first place. Maybe I should just see what it's all about. And um, it was bad. It was but, bad, but we did it. But we did it. We're champions. We are wine champions. We, we are. Did we it. are wine moms. Yeah, we are. I love it. But I think that's going to be the end of our 10th so. week oh, episode, yeah. you guys. This is our 10th episode. And the support what, uh, that I've been getting, oh how many downloads that we've gotten on podcast.com how many minutes and views we've gotten on my youtube channel i really need to work on our mommy wines podcast youtube channel because i was concerned because i didn't have some of the beginning episodes 
I really need to figure that out this week. Remind me. Send me a text. Harass me. Put me in your Google Calendar. Whatever you got to do. Um, don't done. let me forget that. Because I won't. That I won't. needed to be done like five weeks ago. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's get our own YouTube channel. And I think like in the next couple of episodes, we really need to go live. We, we need do. to live stream on YouTube. We need to be recording it. I think it would be so much fun. It would be so fun. Super fun. You can currently now find the episodes on my YouTube channel, which is just Emma Dawn. Yes. Um, you can also find my Blogging 101 series there and some random super embarrassing videos that I did when I thought I wanted to be a YouTuber. Um, hashtag millennial yet. bullshit. <laughs> um, I don't oh, know. My I really enjoy being behind the mic. Yes. But... But for you guys, for our fans, for our listeners, you can we'll go live. There. But I think we'll, we'll go live. We'll we go will. Live. We, we should have done it this week, but sorry, it's just not a good week. It's not a good week. Next week, Crazy though. As hell. Next yes, week, yes, yes, we will make an effort. We're doing the damn thing. Yes, and I think it'll be really fun for us to do maybe like Instagram lives. Yeah. Um. Do it all. Like maybe we've got a Facebook page that yeah. we can go live on. We can get all kinds of media going. Let's do it. it. Let's do it. I have been really considering reaching out to some people to be guest co-hosts. Yes. Let's. We really need to take this serious. I really want to re- reach out Let's to the it. Lunchbox. And yes. I want to get some kind of fitness yes. enthusiast, yes. guru. You know who I think would be perfect is the owner and CEO of Zaya Activewear. Oh, my God. That would be amazing. Erin Bradley has agreed to be on the show before. Oh my god, let's do it. Um, and she lives right here in the city. Let's do it. I'm down. So I'll reach out to her and I'm see totally down. what fitness tips she has. Yeah. Um, because girl, I need to like step up my game. And I need a pair of her leggings. They're so good, right? Like yesterday. <laughs> but I think that's gonna be the end of our show this week. I think so. Happy ten week. Happy ten week, girl. <laughs> We did it. Yeah. Until oh next week, guys. Hey, guys. We love uh, you. Love Keep you. Keep listening. Yes. All thank right. you for listening this long and yes. enjoying our crazy, crazy. life stories. <laughs> Bye. Bye.